We do YouTube live now. YouTube we're gonna be live first. So for YouTube live here, we're live on YouTube. Great. Hello, hello, hello. Good afternoon. We are here live in, in First Warfare, here live at um, the incubator. And we will be switching over to the, uh, the Facebook Live now. So we're turning this on. We're going live now on Facebook Live. So going back here. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, here are with Facebook Live right now, and then we'll welcome our friend and Bitcoin enthusiast Henry Inser. Thank How you, Edwin. Henry? Good, good, Edwin. Yourself. Good to see you, man. My pleasure. It's a long time. Henry used to be part of the Eagle Communications team back in 2000. What? 13, 2014. 2013, 2014. That yep. was a long time ago, and then now he's. Uh, doing his own thing and he joined us today live from Boca Raton, Florida at the Iglac Bator Incubator. We're transmitting from our radio studio, both live for um, um, just one second. I think our YouTube live went down, but we're going to fix that right now. Okay, so um, we have to make a change here. I'm sorry for that to make a few ch adjustments for the Facebook, for the YouTube Live to come on board again. And uh, I think YouTube Live is coming back in a few seconds. I just hope we get some likes. Yeah, right? Anyhow, so we don't really mind about the YouTube Live, but we can, because we're in Facebook Live right now already, so we're going back to, uh, what you see here is, our, is a, it's a directory where I have a bunch of code for cryptocurrencies. And we're going to bring here the first, uh, also that's all the Bitcoin uh, prices of today. So let's start with that, with yeah. the, so, <coughs> so we'll see where we are. <coughs> just, 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 to, just to showcase yeah. here. So but, uh, before we continue, Henry, uh -huh. we are going to uh, briefly introduce your background on Bitcoin. And for that, I will need your your um, wallet your help, address, your wallet address, and <laughs> and your consent to to speak to the audience about Bitcoin right now. Go ahead. Okay, so sure. Uh, well, my name is Henry Yinser. I have a Master of Business Administration, and uh, you know I work as a manager for a number of um, uh, big companies. Um, and um, the reason I'm here is because uh, you know I've been in the crypto space. Uh, since 2013, uh, back when Bitcoin was only worth, you know, $60. And I feel that I have knowledge that I like to share with other people uh, with regards to crypto and cryptocurrencies. Kenry, let's do one thing. Why don't we go to back to 2013 here at the chart. Let's see, January 1, 2013. Uh, like around what March 2013 maybe like I'll, I'll say March 2013 you're gonna see the price in and around 60 65 dollars okay if I yes. remember correctly hold on one second let me just finish this thing 13 and we put this on 13 as well to see where things um so I have a rich a little bit of like a, what we call it is a, a like a time machine. So we're going Correct. to go back to on time. So you see Bitcoin in 2013 <coughs> was um, basically nothing, right? Compared to today. Can you, yeah, it was can, actually, you can you tell us a little bit of this time when, when you started? Yeah, with the well, the first time I noticed that, you know, the, the price uh, was about 60 or $65, if I remember correctly. And that was back in April of 2013. And uh, I remember, you know, uh, it was you who asked me, you know, told me about Bitcoin and asked me to do some research on it uh, to see if we could, you know, accept it uh, into our cloud computing platform. I hope you remember that, right? Right, right, right. That was the reason. You're right. We exactly. were doing the, the Hula Drive. Correct. We were yeah. doing the Hula Drive at the time. Yeah. And so I, I, did, I did a little bit of research and I thought, hmm, you know, this is interesting. Um, and uh, my first thought was, you know, this is all virtual money. 
um, it, it's, it ha probably has no value or it's probably worthless. I can't believe that people are paying, you know, $60 for this. And I came back and I really think if you, if you remember, you know, I, I told you that, you know, it's just a, uh, a, a very early technology and hardly anybody's using it. So chances are we're not going to be using it either. That was, that was at the time, you know, I was unaware of what Bitcoin were you the same, right? Right, so I think no, no one could expect what happened to Bitcoin today. So if you see this chart that we put on the screen, it's obvious that I will believe that you were describing something around April 2013. Yeah, that was, that was actually, that was actually, uh, actually was more, check out the 15th of March, what was the, what was the lowest price? So we're talking about exactly about what? I mean, uh, how many years is that? Six years? I mean, five yeah, years. Yeah, right? that was so about five years ago. So you see here is about um, about right, right? So it was about forty-seven. So it was like around this time. Yeah, basically. it was probably around. Th okay, so maybe so it, March was, it was March twenty. That's when right. you, you you get into. This so that was probably late March. Okay, so yeah, okay. you're probably right. Um, and at the time, you know, it was uh, sixty-five dollars. Again, I, I didn't pay much attention to it. I thought it was just you know um, virtual money that lived on the internet. It had no uh, practical use whatsoever. But uh, because I was very um, uh, familiar with, um, you know, th you know, virtual money, you know, such as you know, World of Warcraft gold, uh, I thought that you know perhaps Bitcoin would eventually, uh, you know, be useful at some point. So one of the things that I did was I kept uh, kept an eye on it. I put the um, you know Bitcoin info news and all of that on my remember RSS feeds. So um, I left it there, and once in a while I would get all this uh, news and information on Bitcoin on on my RSS, and I kept a close look at it. And it wasn't until November or the, or December of 2013, uh, later that year, uh, that it really caught my attention. That was when the price you know, skyrocketed from like about a hundred dollars to a little over a thousand dollars. Wow. You know? And I, I just couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it. I was like, uh, you know, you know, I thought that, you know, can go that high so quickly and so fast. And so, then, so, so, so what you're describing is a very like, uh, uh, a drastic change correct. in price that uh, caught your attention and you're like Whoa, what's up yes and then it got even better because then i heard about what happened to litecoin uh because litecoin was a, one of those very new uh cryptocurrencies at the time and the litecoin price went from i believe it was just one dollar you know all the way up to fifty dollars we have in the chart right now uh henry uh the litecoin as well up the I believe is uh, they showcase in this uh, particular uh, chart uh, the U.S. dollars here, and then uh, we have the Litecoin. And right. If uh, you go all the way to the left, you'll see what the price was. Yeah, three dollars. Uh, Two dollars. Yeah, just three dollars. It was nothing. Us. Yeah, and then uh, in December 2013, it went up all the way up to 50. So I said to myself, you know, uh, how is it possible that? It's right here. You see, it says thirty thirty dollars for you right here. So this is around uh, two thousand fourteen when you described this. Right. It, it actually peaked at a at a, at a high of fifty two dollars okay. uh, back in November or December of uh, two thousand thirteen. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, you know, if this happened once, it's going to happen again. So I better get on, onto this crypto thing. But also more, I realized that. Um, I had to learn what uh, crypto uh, was, what what made Bitcoin work, and that was something that I was not familiar with. And in the last last time that I was here, um, you know, doing a podcast with you, I talked about how um, what Bitcoin was, and I said I mentioned that Bitcoin is uh, digital gold. It is digital gold. It is the uh, best way to think about it. Uh, because it is scarce and it's also uh, very secure. And um, even though right now it's used as a speculative investment, um, in the future it will be uh, very, very useful. And that is why people are buying it up uh, right now. Because um, it's it's kind of like, uh, you know, technology is so new that it's kind of like trying to explain to someone 
uh, back in the 1980s, uh, what the internet would be like, you know? Um, if we could go back in time and try to explain to somebody, you know, um, in the 1980s and say, you know, the internet's gonna be like this, like so and so, well, they wouldn't understand it. Uh, we are at a point uh, very similar uh, with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, where uh, the vast majority of people are still unaware uh, of, of cryptos in general, but even those who are aware uh, don't know exactly what it is and how it works. Uh, and so what I want to do in this uh, session is I want to go over some of the uh, common misconceptions about uh, Bitcoin out there because there's a lot of misinformation and a lot of uh, misconceptions that I, I I run across, especially with people who are still, you know, either unaware or uninformed uh, about uh, Bitcoin and cryptos altogether. Okay, let, let's start with uh, like the anonymity part. Like that's uh, one of the main factors that people believe is uh, one of the drivers, correct? So, was, uh, can you explain us to a little bit, uh, Henry, the anonymity section of the Bitcoin? Sure. Uh, so, um, Bitcoin. A lot of people think the common misconception is that Bitcoin is fully an anonymous, and that's not the case. It is semi-anonymous, uh, in the sense that uh, when you have a, a Bitcoin wallet, you have a Bitcoin address. Uh, let's 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 illustrate here, like on the screen, uh, Henry. Like, uh, since we have a Facebook Live, like, what will be like a Bitcoin address? Let's say, for example, you're describing that right, right now. So, a Bitcoin so, address so is the Bitcoin a address. Uh, sorry, this is an example right now. Can you can you right, explain so to people in very simple terms what this so means? So, a Bitcoin address is a series of uh, letters and numbers. Uh, which uh, computers in the Bitcoin network use uh, to identify your account, let's say, uh, for lack of a better word. Um, with this address, uh, you are able to uh, receive Bitcoins. Uh, anybody can send you uh, Bitcoins with that, with that address. By the way, there's two types of addresses. There's a public address, uh, which you can give to anybody, and then there's, uh, there's a private address. And the private address uh, is something that you keep, that you use uh, to be able to uh, send transactions out to anybody. Yeah, I believe that the private address is the one that you have to keep as much as possible. It's a secret because uh, once somebody get a hold of that, then you're pretty much done, right? Correct. Um, okay, perfect. So, so, so we we understand now that is uh, the Bitcoin address is nothing but um, some sort of. Uh, uh, string of characters, right, that are are required to 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 identify your wallet, and uh, so we'll, why is it not anonymous, or so why is it anonymous? Well, the reason it's not anonymous is because uh, the Bitcoin network, uh, the blockchain itself, and I don't want to get too technical right now, uh, but uh, within the Bitcoin network, uh, anyone it, it is so transparent that anyone can. Uh, see the transactions that are occurring and that have occurred uh, within the network. So, for example, if you send me uh, some Bitcoin, I can uh, go online and check what your Bitcoin is. I can trace back all the transactions that you have made. Correct. See, now it, it's not like a like a bank account with you know in a bank account you know with your name on it because no one knows. You know, when you look at a, at a Bitcoin public address, you don't know who the person is uh, behind that address who's right. using it. However, you can track uh, the transactions that have happened and that will happen. And so that's why I say that uh, Bitcoin is not fully anonymous. It is only semi-anonymous. Right, right. In essence, uh, what the blockchain contains is all the addresses with all the transactions tied to that address. And everyone in the network knows what happens. So that's the, the, the beauty of the blockchain. So basically you have a system where you have a, 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 a nice uh, um, collection of, of data in a, in a big file. Well, just to, to elaborate on that, it's about 160 gigs right now, 170 yeah, gigs for about. Bitcoin right now. And maybe it began the the, well, the, the, the Genesis transaction, right, was basically... Yeah, it was first. way back in January of uh, 2009. Okay. That was the very, very first transaction, and that was done by 
uh, the founder of Bitcoin, and his name, he, he remains anonymous. He or she or they, whoever they were, What's uh, the remains name that we an use anonymous. It? And the name that uh, they used, uh, they used the pseudonym uh, Satoshi Nakamoto. Satoshi Nakamoto. Correct. Satoshi Nakamoto is supposed to be the founder and the creator of the Bitcoin, correct? Yes. He, well, what he did was he took these that ha were already being used. Uh, so, for example, he took the concept of decentralization and he took the concept of and he put them together in, a, in, in, a, in an innovative way to create a, a currency called Bitcoin. By the way, uh, Satoshi is also credited as being the inventor of the blockchain. That so, was that, so that was actually, Okay, so he, he created the blockchain. He basically defined how the blockchain was going to interact, specifically for Bitcoin, right? Right. Then the Bitcoin project was taken over by multiple people, by the community, and then... Uh, it's and branched. it took off from there, yeah. It took off from there. So that's that's fantastic. So that was the first misconception is, uh, in summary, right, anonymity is uh, sort of anonymous as long as you don't reveal that your wallet belongs to you. Correct, you correct, secret, yes. Right? So that's, uh, that would be the solution for that particular anonymity. And then uh, there is a lot of people that are saying that it's a scam, that it's, it's going to be illegal, legalization issues. Uh, you know, they just uh, another another cryptocurrency that just recently was um, was uh, coined or issued or is being issued is the Petro. Uh, the United States has basically filed some sort of uh, legal action against the Petro, and there is uh, apparently some regulations being done in terms of the Bitcoin and other currencies. What's your view on that? at stake regarding legality and what that's, um, that's a, a danger or, or a risk for, for any Bitcoin investor. Okay, well, um, I think the authorities here in the United States have already said that, uh, or, or at least they've warned uh, anybody uh, not to get invested or get involved uh, with, with the Petro. Uh, so if you, for those who don't know what the Petro is, um, it's basically a cryptocurrency from the government of Venezuela, and they're supposed to uh, back uh, those uh, cryptos uh, with oil. Um, now, when Maduro is going to honor that is a whole different matter. Uh, but the reason why the petrol is such a bad idea, it is because it's in the hands and in the control of the Venezuelan government. And the reason why that is bad is because um, it is not uh, decentralized, which is mm, the, the exact Well, I mean, it, it's just an ICO, right? Let's not, let's not make, like, let's make a pompous uh, argument about the Venezuelan government creating a, cri a cryptocurrency, right? It's just, uh, I mean, they just created an ICO on top of Ethereum. That's it. They didn't do anything marvelous. I mean, of course, right, For it was, it's, a, it's a unique thing because it's a government that created an ICO, so they launched Petra. Petra is an ICO that is backed by oil that's it right but you have to understand that because they have complete control uh, the Venezuelan government has complete control of the petrol uh, they can inflate they can inflate uh, the number of petrols uh, to infinity so there is no guarantee if you buy if, let's say you were to buy some petrols to, uh, today that your petrols will hold will hold it uh, their value uh, Correct. over time uh, be simply because, um, well, uh, luckily for us here in the United States, uh, you know, the supposed to grow uh, before they actually start, uh, you know, regulating it. No, but there are some regulations already, right? No, that there the, are. The, the, the SEC has but already, there can like, be, yeah, that, that's, just starting, that's just that's just starting to happen right now. Okay. Uh, but what I'm trying to get to is the the amount or the level of regulation because if you have a place where there's too much regulation such as for example uh, in the state of of New York uh, what happened in 2014 and 2015 I don't know if you're aware uh, was that New York uh, heavily uh, regulated uh, Bitcoin and one of the things that it did is it required a license from companies in the crypto space uh, to do business and uh, you know it was very restrictive and it was very ridiculous and companies had to pay a very hefty fee uh, it was like fifty thousand dollars or something like that if i remember correctly um, and so a lot of companies uh, that were located in new york 
decided they were they, they were they were going to move out and they were not going to do business with anybody in New York as a result of that. They quit. So we right. quit. So again, the, the point that I'm trying to make is uh, some regulation is needed, but you know uh, governments are going to have to like str strike a proper balance as to how much regulation will be needed in the crypto space, uh, you know, to make it viable. Okay, one more thing is uh, this uh, pricing, right? Pricing is going up. Oh, well, we should ask Alexa what the price is. Alexa, what's the prices of Bitcoin? Hmm, maybe the skill. Coinbase Bitcoin slash Ethereum price can um. help. Do you want to try it? Yes, Alexa. You're loading crap into my Alexa, my friend. <laughs> Can't you hear me? Maybe the skill. Coinbase Bitcoin slash Ethereum price can help. Do you want to try it? Yes. Hi, feel free to ask me for Bitcoin price. What's the Bitcoin price right now, Alexa? The Bitcoin price right now is $7,476.73. You can buy Bitcoin now with $7,551.68. Or you could sell your Bitcoin with $7,402.14. So you see, there's a little bit of a beta as arbitrage game right there. Oh, of course, the sell on I the mean, ass are, are substantially divided by about 150. Oh yeah, I mean, there, there's the the opportunity for arbitrage is tremendous. But by, by the way, I mean, Alexa is always invited to our, our shows. Um, Alexa, I couldn't uh, sorry, Alexa. Alexa, what's your name? Sorry, I don't know that one. <laughs> uh, anyhow, so we will bring Alexa to a show uh, as long as uh, she brings some value. Uh, just to interrupt Henry here in the in the discussion about Bitcoin, we are actually in YouTube Live at the moment, so we have both um, um, uh, contents, both in, in in Facebook Live as well uh, as well as YouTube Live. So, so one thing I, I like to address, Edwin, is uh, one another typical misconception uh, that I often hear out there is a lot of people tell me, well, what gives Bitcoin its value? Why is it valuable it, uh, to begin with? Yeah, yeah, why is it valuable? Why do people you are know, like saying, exactly. a lot of people why, ask me the same question. Why would I want to purchase something that is non-physical, that is completely digital, and, you know, I can't put it in my mouth, I can't stuff it in my car for gasoline. Right. You know, uh, what makes it valuable? Um you know, years ago, years ago, I used to tell people, the way I, I used to answer that question was, you know, I used to tell them, well, what makes anything valuable? Uh, when you think about it, the only reason that anything has value is because other people value it as well, you know? Uh, I know it sounds, but to the extent that people uh, value Bitcoin and they see value within Bitcoin, which I could argue that there is, and there definitely will be, um, then it is valuable for those who uh, truly understand uh, what the technology is and what it's capable of. Uh, so that's what makes the value. Uh, same thing for fiat. Um, with fiat, it's only as valuable as people make it to be, make it to be. Uh, although the government, of course, forces people to, you know, uh, use their fiat currencies. Um, but, you know, the same thing could be said of gold, you know, the, the value of gold is out there on the market and uh, people collectively uh, decide what the value of gold is. I have, I have actually, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but I have put something on the screen right here that I want you to comment on. Sure. And it's uh, Alan Greenspan. Um, as you know, he was uh, the chief of the Fed for many years and in many ways is uh, considered a guru in, in, in economics and uh, and currencies and all that stuff. So he says that uh, Bitcoin is not a rational currency. However, when you see this video, I think it actually explains what you said. I think it's a very, very, uh, I recommend watching. I don't think we can broadcast that here. We don't have the right for that. So we can rebroadcast it, but like you, you guys can go online and see it yourself. Anyhow, so continue, go, go on. Uh, well, I would say uh, you gotta think about um, uh, Mr. Greenspan because uh, Mr. Greenspan, uh, the reason we had the 2008-2009 uh, housing bubble, you know, uh, I would argue was to a very large extent uh, due to the policies that uh, Mr. Greenspan uh, set about. But, you know, we're not going to go there. 
Um, let, let me ask you one thing, Henry, like, and, and this is something that uh, comes up from the chart, right? And um, if you used to trade stocks or bonds or options, so whenever you see this, uh, this chart, basically, it's usually called a double bottom. Correct, yes. Okay. So um, can you tell us what will occur in that situation? Uh, <laughs> okay, well, first of all, <coughs> a, a, a little, um, what is it called, a, a warning. Uh, yeah, no, we, this, this is not a this is not financial. Not financial. Okay. No, you're you're a running your own risk, right? You are no. not. Exactly. As, uh, my sister has as, as a license. Oh, okay, I, I don't have a I'm not a financial advisor, so this okay. is not financial advice. I'm about to say it's just uh, my opinion. Okay. So yes, you're right. Uh, what we're seeing right now is we're seeing a double bottom that has happened after an all-time high of uh, Bitcoin, uh, which reached about uh, almost twenty thousand uh, dollars back in December. And if you see that the bottom is like six thousand nine hundred. Correct. And then we're actually hitting and around then that. Right now we're at you know what seventy four hundred. That's what Alexa said. Right? So um, I'm not one to speculate, but from from the information that I that I have gathered, and I gather a lot of information, you know, from Twitter, from YouTube, from other Bitcoin enthusiasts. Uh, everybody is expecting uh, uh, an even lower bottom uh, pretty soon. Um, so you would expect it to go lower than that. Yeah, that's the, the consensus saying. seems to be about six thousand. Six thousand. Yeah, six thousand. We're gonna go down to. 6, so we're gonna 000. hit basically the, the the there's okay, and once again we're not doing stock analysis here, and we don't want to apply. But if you see here in the chart, around the six thousand dollars price, there was a period of time of about um, close to six months. If you see this area. Yep, I see it. So this area is around six thousand. So all the people here are still ahead of the game. Correct. By a thousand five hundred dollars, so if all the people that purchase a six thousand hit, see that the people that have the coins here sell off, and they hit six thousand, it may they may actually think about selling too. That's the logic behind this 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 uh, base here, this area, and that. Uh, but if you see, it's very consistent. So even even if even the people that bought a four thousand five thousand. This will be like a huge base. It looks like a very like long, steady area where I believe from analysis, stock analysis that the price either remains in this area or bounces back. That's okay. that's a big I, You know, well, I'm gonna say even if it drops below, even if it drops below uh, six thousand, there's still a lot of support uh, even before you get to five thousand. So um, again, my speculation is we will probably bounce. In and around that area between five and six thousand. Right. Uh, so, now, so where will we go from there? Is anybody's guess? Uh, but I really feel that there is so much innovation uh, and so much uh, uh, services that are, are being built in the crypto space, uh, and there is still a very, very huge demand for Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies. But just, just, just to speculate a little bit, right? Whenever it's a double bottom in the stock market. Mm -hmm. They call it the bo double bottom reversal. Yeah, it could and they, be a and reversal, they, and yes. it has and it has happened in many stocks. If you see an example here on the screen, right? If you see them, they're like double bottom examples. Correct. Basically, we are we believe we're hitting this area, right? Where the double bottom oh. is on that on the Bitcoin chart. So uh, we can speculate, like again, this is pure speculation that uh, once it hit this this area, this range. If he if he breaks the the support level, then okay, we are, we're wrong. But if he doesn't, if he holds up the price, it's a high chance or 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 from from prior uh, behaviors on pricing on um, different stocks that this will be a reversal and it will actually be. So it's something to study, it's something to analyze, it's uh, something to study here right. from the stock market pattern. So yeah, everybody uh, right now is watching the price because it, it is dropping. And like you said, if, if it drops to a certain degree, uh, in, 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 in further trouble, right, with price could be in further trouble, but if it bounces from there, then there's a good chance that uh, we could recover, the price could eventually uh, recover from that Correct. point. All right, so one more thing here that uh, is, um, is kind of interesting is uh, it's about like the bubble thing. Right. Okay. 
So we see bubbles and then we can, let me just bring some bubbles on the screen so you guys can see an example of a bubble and then you can, uh, so we're not making things up here in, the, in our incubator. By the way, we're, we're live from the Eglavator uh, incubator. We're in this radio and TV studio uh, uh, in this area right now. And then Henry has uh, come from Miami, right? Did right. You know, no, no, where's the, the, the I live next to uh, Dolphin Mall. You were not near the bridge, right? Uh, actually, the bridge was just like five minutes away from my house. I'm glad you were not near that bridge. Right? I was very fortunate that neither myself nor anybody that I know was anywhere near that bridge. That was a very unfortunate situation for the university, uh, Florida International University, because uh, they showcased that bridge in very, very, um, like, pompous way, right? They were very pompous about it. They yeah, were, very were much making, so. And unfortunately, that... that uh, that happened. So anyhow, so let's see. Uh, here is a, a Wikipedia, right? And then they describe what a stock market bubble is. And if you can see this I chart, think, I think we should ask Alexa whether um, Bitcoin is in a, in a bubble or not. Alexa, is Bitcoin in a bubble? Sorry, I don't know that. Um, she doesn't you know. know. Uh, if, he, if Alexa doesn't know, we don't know. I guess that's, <laughs> that's a fair that's, answer. That's a, that's Sorry, a very. I don't know that. Yeah, you don't even know that. Know that. All right, so 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 like, like just to to showcase right like different bubbles here uh, and then wh how they compare to to the to the Bitcoin. So I mean, we're pulling here some uh, stock market bubble definition from Wikipedia, and the stock market bubble is an economic bubble um, taking place in the stock markets or financial markets when market participants drive the stock prices above the value in relation to some other systems. Also, the valuation. So, so is this happening right now to Bitcoin at seven thousand? You know, that's, that's a very good question. And again, it goes back to the misconceptions that I get. Uh, one of the um, uh, reasons why a lot of people want does recuperate, uh, they can see some uh, gains in profit. Okay, that's a personal Henry Insert recommendation. Uh, I want to uh, thank one of our sponsors. Uh, this is the World Wildlife Foundation. <laughs> um, they actually are a non-profit organization that is uh, trying to save uh, animals and pets, especially animals in extinction, like the white tiger, Correct. which is our animals already extinct. You Correct. can check it out online yourself. But this is a regular tiger, and it came to uh, my attention uh, a few days ago that tigers are being raised in Florida and many other places in uh, the United States for only one reason. Do you yeah. know what reason is? No, but I mean, they got to be um, conservation efforts then? No. They used to take a selfie, and then they kill oh, the tiger. No way. Wow. Unfortunately, that's what's happening in the United States. It is completely legal, so there's a, it's a very sad situation. But at the same time, they kill the animals in Africa. Right. I guess that uh, if we just collect for those uh, cubs to Africa and then put them in their wildlife, Maybe that could help uh, solve, but for there's a there's a situation with animals. Anyhow, the well, world, the World know, Wildlife actually, Foundation. That, that's actually, uh, one of the things. Elephants and elephants, rhinos and tigers are being saved by the by this foundation. Just right. to so you have a bunch of bitcoins that you don't want, you can just donate it to them. <laughs> <laughs> no, what you can do is if you if you really believe in that cause. You can actually uh, create a coin, right, and have an ICO, oh, that's and a that idea. coin will be uh, the purpose of that coin will be, you know, uh, an animal to conservation fund. to fund animal conservation, so okay. that people who really believe in that cause uh, could help the matter. There's so the thing is, there's so many uses uh, for cryptocurrencies and the blockchain uh, out there that we are just beginning to discover, you know, right. and so that that could be uh, one of them. Yeah. Um, another thing that I wanted to talk about, Edwin, was, uh, you know, well, first of all, uh, people, again, uh, often ask me, this going back to the bubble, is uh, they ask me, you know, is it too late to invest in Bitcoin? Is it too late? Is it, are, did we miss the, the train? Did we miss the boat? Correct. Are did we... you miss the train? Did you miss the Volvo boat? You didn't miss the train this time, right, Henry? Well, no, no, I, I didn't miss the train. I, I realized as soon as there no, was no, an opportunity... No, the, no, the, 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 the trial route. Like, oh, 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 oh no, no, I, didn't, I did not miss that train. No, <laughs> no, no, I did not. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Anyhow, so, no, yeah, are we, are we, are we like... 
out of the uh, out of this uh, Bitcoin situation, or are we can no, still get in? No, I, I would argue that no. So okay, so first of all, you're not gonna find. I don't think you're, you, Bitcoin's gonna go below a hundred dollars like it was, you know, uh, six or seven years ago. That's that's just not right. gonna happen. But you're we're still in the very early phases of uh, Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. As a matter of fact, the vast majority of people. Uh, are not aware or probably may not have heard of, of Bitcoin or crypto altogether. And even those who have, have not invested in it uh, because they don't see uh, what the value is behind uh, cryptos and, and the blockchain. So we are at a stage where the innovators, the innovator, innovator, the stage for the innovators is already done. The mm -hmm. innovators have done their job at creating cryptos uh, and, and the blockchain uh, but we are at the stage where there's early adopters. We're still at the age where early people are still adopting, okay. like myself, like yourself. We're still adopting crypto. And uh, just like any technology, it's going to mature over the years. And in the distant future, say some 10 years from now, personally, this is, again, my opinion, and it's not financial advice, I could definitely see how uh, one single Bitcoin could be worth, you know, up to a million dollars or more for the simple reason that it's scarce. It's a very scarce uh, valuable asset. asset. Correct. Yeah, no, I, that's one a logic I think uh, I, I made myself is, is uh, understand is that the replacement cost of a Bitcoin right now, if you want to make one Bitcoin again, yeah. is about maybe how many servers? How many, how many end miners do we need to make a Bitcoin? <sighs> You will, you will need quite a lot. Yeah, we'll need like Just maybe like if has like you you basically need like computing power to hash the values and find the Bitcoin and make the Bitcoin be created for you. And that will require basically several hundred or if not thousands of kilowatts hour. So one thousand or let's say let's say you spend ten thousand kilowatts hour to find a Bitcoin and you're lucky you find it. Then that represents about fifteen hundred dollars already. Uh, yes. It's like 15 cents per, 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 per kilowatt hour in a very cheap location. If I not believe more. so. I believe so. And yes. that's without considering the cost of the AC. That's without considering the cost of the miner. That's not internet, uh, the right. power. Anyhow, everything else. That is so why. You, so, so if you have one miner doing that mm -hmm. and maybe you have 10 miners, as the difficulty increases, then the cost is just going to increase. Yeah. And, and what we could do is, uh, again, for those viewers who are not familiar with, is uh, we can talk about mining. Uh, uh, I, 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 I think the value of skin. What was that, that website you mentioned to me once about the calculator, the Bitcoin calculator? Oh boy! Uh, no, no, no. I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll Google it. So we're gonna use Google Bitcoin calculator. Mm, try Bitcoin mining calculator. Okay. So we're going to try to to make a, a, a an educated guess, right? Or why the Bitcoin price should go higher. Yeah, that's it. Higher. That's the one. So let's say that uh, we have a computing power of, uh, let's say, an ant miner. So ant miner S7, right? Uh, S9. S9, okay. Yes. Uh, mega hash. So mega hash is the number of hashes per second that an ant miner, this device here, with this cooling fan here, can actually make. So according to the Bitcoin Wikipedia, the S9, which is one of the more advanced devices, can do 14,000, right? Uh, 14 Me million. 14 million mega hashes, mega per, hashes second. per second. Correct. So 14 million um, are we, are we, is 14 million or 14,000? No, it's 14 million. I think you had it right. Okay. But then you got to take, take, take consideration. So for example, Gold Yeah, I say it's, it's 1,500. It's Okay, and then let's say 18 cents per kilowatt. Okay, right. so basically right now to make one Bitcoin is gonna cost around eight thousand dollars. Yeah, that that that's, that sounds correct. So that's so, 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 fact, so uh, it's, a, it's a break even point right now, basically. Well, no, right? no, it's not a break even. You're losing money here. Yeah, no, no. But what I'm saying is that 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 that's that's this is the measuring tape, right? Because if it costs to make one one Bitcoin seven thousand mm -hmm. dollars. Either the system is going to crash because nobody's going to start making no, more bitcoins. No, of course. Yeah, the, the margins are razor thin. You, you need to realize. No, that. when trying to, that's a replacement value, right? That's right. Trying to anyhow. So that could be. So anyhow. So like 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 as time increases, as time progresses, right? 
uh, then uh, this 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 uh, uh, computational cost is just going to increase to the point that it will be probably seventy thousand dollars just to make one bitcoin. Yeah, that's exactly where it's heading. And then uh, maybe in the next uh, another ten years is going to be seven hundred thousand. So it's going to be close to the million dollars that you described. Yep, it is. And so and so it's, 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 it's very plausible. It's very plausible yeah. that this, if this continues, then the replacement cost of, of one bitcoin is going to be one million dollars, and therefore all the other bitcoins that were made with pretty much nothing. Correct. They were going to work the same yeah, because exactly. there's no distinctions on the bitcoins that were right. older. Than bitcoins that are uh, another way to look at it is if you take a look at the price back when bitcoin was in the market in uh, 2011, you know, it, it started at less than a dollar. You know, you would realize that uh, the price of a bitcoin has increased by a multiple of 10, by a power of 10. Henry. Every two and a half years. Two and a half years. Okay, that's that's an interesting value, and this so is the, and this, and that's a rough est estimate. Yep. Okay, so so actually, I want you to say hello to our friend Carlos Cabrera. Hi, Carlos. How are you? Carlos Cabrera is in Canada, and he's in. Uh, he's actually not freezing himself anymore. Canada, eh? Yeah, he's in Toronto. So we are expecting a phone call from him. Actually, he said it was in a call. But uh, I don't see him doing it. Okay. Yeah, so uh, anyhow, so let's so, let's continue with the discussion like you're describing that 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 there's how about inflation? How's the uh, the Bitcoin and uh, the inflation, inflation is very important uh, with Bitcoin because what happens is uh, inflation needs it needs to uh, remain at, at at a constant level, and the way that uh, Bitcoin was created, it was modeled after uh, mining. Uh, because when you have a, a, a mine, I'm talking an actual mine, like a right. gold mine, when you initially uh, discover a gold mine, you know, you can obtain uh, gold very easily. But as time progresses, it becomes more and more difficult to obtain that gold, to extract that gold uh, from the ground. So Satoshi Nakamoto um, modeled uh, the inflation rate of Bitcoin kind of like in a similar fashion where the inflation rate uh, was set at the very beginning, back in 2009, at uh, 50 bitcoins every 10 minutes. 50 okay? bitcoins every 10 minutes. Right. And the inflation rate would change every four years. So in uh, 2000... That's why the blocks right now are like six bitcoins. Yeah. Like so in, in 2013... Sorry, 50, 50 bitcoins per block, right? And 50, it started at 50 bitcoins per block. And then in 2013, it went down to 25 per block. Right. And in 2017, went down again to 12 and a half, 12 and a half bitcoins right. per block. But anyhow, so, so, so just, to, just to give you a heads up, right? Like when you find a bitcoin, you find actually the block. So you basically you create the, the, the initial block of the blockchain. So when you find that hash number with the mega hashes, then that will be the first thing that you create. And they call it the blockchain because those 50 bitcoins or 25 bitcoins or 25 bitcoins then will be transacted. So I will give one five to Henry and then keep twelve for me. <laughs> well, you know, it depends. It depends. No, uh, let's say, let's say, like uh, right. If, just if, to be if, fair, if for if the, let's say we were, we, we, we were, for example, we we were charging for your Coca Cola ad, ad right, Henry, right. because you have a Coke Coca Cola I product guess. right here, right? There you go. So yeah, it's for free not, ad, but not getting any money from Coca Cola. Anyhow, but let's assume for a second that we actually get money from that. <laughs> so I'll give you point five and I get twelve. From that blockchain, from that block, then right. it, it would be recorded in the blockchain that the, the wallet associated to Henry receives 0.5, and the wallet associated to, to sorry, to Edwin, uh, 12, Correct. and the associated to Henry, 0.5. Right, right. Uh, it, w how it works, um, more than likely, is a lot of these miners uh, join pools, pools of other miners. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay. We're, we're describing how the Bitcoin actually the blockchain actually. Oh, okay, functions. I see, I see. Well, what we could do is we could we could talk in another podcast. We could talk more about mining and how mining works. Yeah, no, I think I think and we're going to we're going to bring that. Henry again. This is a very interesting uh, topic, I, I believe, and everybody wants to learn a little bit on, on the Bitcoin and the Bitcoin mining and Litecoins. So it's, this is our our first our, our first uh, interview with Henry. He's been uh, how many years have you been in Bitcoin? Since 2013, so that's five years now, almost. And yeah. nobody can have ten years of experience because there was no Bitcoin. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> in you know, 2000, it's kind of, it's kind of 2008. funny. <laughs> a lot of a lot of these uh, big companies like uh, Visa and Bank of America right. are asking for blockchain engineers with ten years of experience. 
You know, so they, they have they, they, no they, they, idea. They, they began, it, well, maybe maybe what they they're want Satoshi Nakamoto is what they're trying to look for. Well, <laughs> may, maybe what they're trying to say is that they want a, an engineer with ten years of coding experience, perhaps and some blockchain, perhaps. Right? No, but they, but they really specify they want ten years of coding or uh, blockchain experience. Well, they have no idea how. You know, uh, recent this mm -hmm. technology is well. That's something that we we, we can e educate them, and, and I think that's that's why the purpose of this type of programs are. So so that that's that's uh, interesting. So we are. Uh, about I wanted to um, cover something else, uh, Edwin. Again, going back to the okay. whole uh, misconception thing. Uh, one very common question that I get is, you know, uh, is Bitcoin hackable? Is it are we able to hack? Bitcoin, because of course, if you know, people have heard so many horrible stories out in the news that Bitcoin was hacked. You know, Bitcoin was hacked, or uh, uh, an exchange was hacked, or a bank was hacked, or whatever. Well, I mean, so the, the one un one thing is to hack an exchange, and one different thing is to hack a Bitcoin. Correct. Can you, Which can is you explain in a very simple manner what this means to people? Exactly. Uh, so, uh, in very general, uh, the uh, the Bitcoin network. Uh, runs on a protocol which is ex code. The code itself is transparent and can be peer reviewed by anybody and has been peer re reviewed thousands or tens of thousands of times. Who knows how, how it's. But it's solid. It's solid in the sense that it is uh, virtually unhackable uh, because, for the sheer reason that when you truly understand how uh, the protocol works, uh, when anybody tries to hack Bitcoin, they're essentially going up against odds that are astronomically impossible, impossible to break. Um, that's the, that, that's a very simple way of explaining it. But put it to, to put it in another way, if Bitcoin, if the whole network right now it's worth about something like sixty-five billion dollars. Go to a website that's called coinmarketcap.com. Yeah, that's the one that we have here. Coinmarketcap.com. Oh, no, that will tell us uh, what the entire uh, Bitcoin network is worth. Okay, we're going it to. It is currently okay. worth, uh, look at the market cap, $127 billion. Do you see down there yeah, next yeah. to Bitcoin? $127 billion. That's how much the market cap is. Yeah, it's a if, little bit. If there's any hacker out there that can break into Bitcoin and totally destroy $127 billion worth of, of market value, they right. would. No, they but, would. but, but let, let, let's, let's go back to the fun, fun foundation, right? Well, why is it hackable? I think that the foundation bit comes from the, from the plain same protocol, the same algorithm that is being used for your bank account. When you connect to an SSL, like HTTPS, for example, you go to HTTPS.gmail.com, and they'll tell you the secure link, and then you have the secure thing over here, right? So well, the, the algorithm. Oh, that's uh, sorry. I don't want you to see my emails. Well, uh, but the the, uh, the addresses themselves. No, are no, no, no. But 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 the 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 product, the, the the algorithm that are used to create the pro public and private ch uh, um, uh, keys. It's exactly the same algorithm that is being yes, used yes. for the the PKCS or, or the public key. A system that is being used for your bank account, yes. for your credit card, which is uh, for, for everything. <coughs> I mean, no, no. The chess is, 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 is the is the is the actual hash. That's, that's, that's different. Oh, I see. Okay. But it's but it's the, the same thing. It's a, it's a combination, right? Like when you go to your bank account and you go to your SSL certificate, mm -hmm. when you when you have that, there's a private key that mm -hmm. is stored at a location managed by Network Solutions or right. by GoDaddy or by a big company like that, they store the certificate, in private key information in a very, very secure way. Then what you see is the public key and what it, when you connect to the website, then that public key is the one that validates that you have a valid certificate on that website. That's right. the same technology that is being used by Bitcoin to sign and to create the public keys and the private keys. So it's exactly the same. So for, for somebody to hack it, it will be easier to hack. The, and not the, only that, the PKCS, that, that, that has to yeah. do with my understanding. Again, I, I'm not a, a Bitcoin coder, mm -hmm. uh, and I'm not going to say that I understand or know everything. Oh, yeah, the, 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 li the life video went dead because it only lasts one hour. So Oh. Yeah. So we will have to restart. Okay, hold on. And broadcast. 
done. So let's do it again. When did it finish? Just now. Okay. Okay. Create the live stream. Bitcoin. But we're still on YouTube Live, just in case you guys didn't know. Oh, okay, know okay, I see. It. But wait, let's let's wait for Facebook uh, right. friends to 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 connect. To join us. So let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Let's check it out. Make sure everything is good. Let's wait a few seconds. Here, everything is working. And uh, let's go back to this live thing. Okay, we're going live. And take a physical. Okay, we're going live now again. So just let me introduce a little bit. This is the second part of the video series with an interview with Henry Inser or uh, or guest here, a speaker at the Iglavator Studios, and we are discussing uh, Bitcoin misconceptions and Bitcoin in general. And uh, he's been about five, six years working on this very successfully. He has a uh, invested in Bitcoin when it was only $60 around that. So he's been very, very uh, successful. And he got, kept himself up to speed with everything related to Bitcoins. So Henry, just to elaborate a little bit more. So what was your, we were discussing just to, to yeah, if we you want to see the previous video in the in the last uh, 10, 15 minutes, we were discussing about uh, case, uh, public security. key stores and yeah, the security. We're about why, the security it's, why it's not hackable, uh, the Bitcoin right now. Yeah, we're talking about how, you know, common misconception, and we, we've talked about several already uh, in the first section. Uh, but in this section, um, you know, what we're talking about was uh, whether or not uh, Bitcoin can be hacked. Uh, because one of the common misconceptions is that, you know, uh, people often hear out in the news that Bitcoin was somehow hacked. And so uh, people do, are, are very hesitant to uh, invest in Bitcoin when they know that uh, it's, they, they feel that it's not secure. And what I'm trying to get across is that uh, the Bitcoin protocol itself, which is the code itself, is virtually unhackable for the reason that it is protected by uh, cryptography, like we were talking about uh, public keys and private keys. Okay, um, but oh, another thing that I wanted to talk to you about, Edwin, is the consensus algorithm, uh, which is, is what, what's used for uh, miners to come together and uh, decide which transactions are authentic, uh, real, and which are not. Correct. Uh, but in order to do that, uh, what it is, is you need at least 50% uh, of the um, network to come to consensus and decide that whether or not uh, the block that you hashed is a valid block, whether the transactions within that block uh, are valid, because if they're not, then that block will get rejected. Correct. So, so, so if you see the code from the Bitcoin uh, code base, basically uh, all the miners not only the miners, but also the nodes. The because nodes, there's a difference yes, the between miners and the nodes. The yes. miners are mining, the nodes are just nodes. I have two nodes here, but I don't mind. So uh, so the node received the, tr the, 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 the blockchain that it has been updated. Somebody said, okay, I gave 0.2 Bitcoin to Henry, and Henry sent 0.1 Bitcoin to Hector or whatever. So, so th that data has been updated. So the transaction has been sent to all those, those nodes. So there is a consensus mechanism that N amount of node needs to be agreeable to that uh, uh, same transaction, so they will validate it. They will all compute the same uh, hash. They will compute the same thing. They Correct. will validate that, and then um, in case I say for whatever reason there's a, the network breaks apart, or whatever, it the longest the longest, the longest chain, chain remains. Correct. A in case there's any cheaters out there, anybody and in who case wants to cheaters, cheat, right. like for example, you decide to cheat, and then uh, you tell the network that your node, even though it has no bitcoins, all of a sudden you give yourself, you know, a thousand bitcoins. All right. So how I is the how are the nodes uh, within the network going to decide whether those uh, 
thousand bitcoins are valid or not. Correct. They're going to look at your transaction history. They're going to say, well, where where is the work that proves that validates that all these transactions have happened? If you don't have that. Uh, in, 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 in the nodes coming to consensus that you have uh, cheated, then your block or the block that you're working on, the block that you're hashing, uh, gets uh, rejected. And my understanding is that as well. Well, I mean, the, 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 the according to the, depends on how the, the Bitcoin D or the, the, the miners are doing that. But uh, yeah, the, the thing is that, the, for example, right here, the latest blocks, is, is this is known information. Correct. So it is transparent. Yes. It's totally transparent. So you can see, for example, that uh, there's fifty one five hundred and fifteen thousand. Uh, the no, height the, the, that's the that's the block number. That's the block number. That's right? the block number. So yes. there's five hundred and fifteen thousand blocks in the in the in the current blockchain, right? Correct. Yes. And then um, you can see the number of transactions within that block. Uh, one thousand one hundred ninety five transactions. Right. So the then you can be back here, for example. You can see these different charts. Uh, what is not updating here? So let's see. Okay, now. So let's see. Let's, let's look at refresh here. And then we, let's say we go to this block, right? Just to see. It was six minutes ago. So it was Correct. created six minutes ago. Yep. So basically. It gives the, you all the information about the, the block. The block, right? So this is the, the main chain. Right. So the, the chain, this you is the, the hash, hash. Yes. This is the hash number. And then it, it, it changed to the previous hash. So there's no way to cheat because now, no, okay, how do you, this one is the previous one. That so is a very good point. So you have to connect every, it to the previous every one. Every new block, I it's, it's attached by, a, uh, by the hash of the previous block. Right, and not only that. that All this, the way this back is to the Genesis block. Yeah, so this is the main block, right? That, and, that, and that validation is going to happen in all the nodes. from the beginning. So what usually happens is that when you have your private key is stored on a server and you trust uh, an exchange, or someone else, like, let's not say name, but let's say Coinbase. And then you trust them with your private key, that's when the risk right. starts. Right, that's a very that's good when point. It, that's when you can get because hacked, because it, if I'm an employee of that company, and then I'm in this girl's an employee, and I, and I was kicked out, and I still have access to a VPN or something, or I know there is a bug in the code that basically I can access to that private key, is game over. Right. So, so what we're trying to get at is, is the code itself, the protocol itself. The is protocol very is, solid, is solid, yeah. But there are services and exchanges that are built in around the the code itself, and those uh, services or exchanges can fail. Such as, such as, uh, it was a very famous case of a, of an exchange called Mt. Gox. Right. Um, and what happened with Mt. Gox was. Uh, Mt. Gox got hacked, and a lot of people believe it, it was uh, an inside job. Uh, yeah, a lot, of, a lot of people believe it's the same. They're, 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 they, they, they even sue the same people, the same owners. Right. Because uh, in a way, you have them as a as a as a trustee. So you trust the the, 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 the the this exchange with your key. Correct. So, so the best way to do this, in case you really want to do this, is to just build your own uh, uh, server. Is to have build your own node, build have your, your own, own wallet. Have uh, your own wallet there. The and lesson here is that you never want to leave your coins on the exchange. Never, never. That That's a huge phrase because they have access to And whoever has your private key basically control has the coins. control of the coins. It's like the, they call it the in, in, the, in, the, in, in, in Florida, right, when you have a car. Right. Whoever has a title yeah. has the car. Correct. So the you don't want the title to be right. with anybody in your hand. Because and they, so they the same the thing goes for crypto. If you don't own the private keys, you really don't own the coins. Right. You know? And they could, and then you just see on the screen that you have 0.5 coins, exactly. 0.5 Bitcoin. But maybe you have nothing. Because and again, just, uh, we're going to go on to another podcast some other day. We're going to talk about wallets, and we're going to talk yeah, about so, so, how so, to secure so, the wallets. Yeah, wallet security is very, very important, but that's uh, another topic that we're going to discuss a little later. But uh, uh, like once again, that's uh, that's uh, that's very very interesting, and and uh, and, uh, and that's how you're gonna protect your 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 coins. And the same is applicable not only for Bitcoin, but Litecoin is yeah. so Zcash for all the different coins, correct? Correct, correct. So um, I think we've talked about a lot of uh, misconceptions. We talked about everything from regulation to the value of business. What else? What else do you wanna uh, uh, talk about? Whether Bitcoin can be hacked. Uh, whether it's too late, whether it's in a bubble, we we talked about all those subjects. Uh, right. No, I, th I think I think we touched on a, on a, on, a, on a lot of subjects. So I want you to to um, 
stop here so we can meet the one hour uh, show deadline. There is and one more question we have. Oh, answered. okay, okay. We have one more question. So okay. actually, let, let me send an email to my friend. Uh, continue, go on. Okay, there is the very, I saved this question for last because sometimes I get this question and it's, it's kind of very interesting. The question goes like this. Who is Satoshi Nakamoto? You know, and uh, when I get asked this question, I usually tell that person that I am Satoshi Nakamoto. You are? Right, but so are you. So are you in the sense that if you use Bitcoin uh, and you believe in the principles of uh, uh, transparency and open source uh, and a uh, digital uh, currency uh, that can be used by anyone, anywhere, at any time, uh, You're with, Satoshi Nakamoto, Nakamoto. Yeah, exactly. You, you are Satoshi Nakamoto, uh, essentially. Um, I, again, this is because that, that's one of the, those questions that I that I often hear, mm -hmm. and people want to know. At this point, you know, Edwin, it really doesn't matter who Satoshi Nakamoto. Yeah, is. it doesn't matter anymore. It doesn't matter. What matters is what what he has created, because what he has created is uh, something. Uh, which Why don't is we ask Alexa? Incredible. Oh, okay. We could ask her, Alexa. Go ask him. Alexa, who is uh, Satoshi Nakamoto? Sorry, I don't know that. She's probably not familiar with him. Who is Mr. Nakamoto, Alexa? She doesn't know. Alexa, so who, who is Satoshi Nakamoto? Moro is a city in Clayton County, Georgia. No, that's United not the right. States. Alexa, stop. Anyhow, so uh, we were trying to contact our friend uh, Car Carlos Cabrera. He is also another like Bitcoin enthusiast. Uh, do we have a chat room with questions uh, um, on Facebook? I don't see any chat room questions right now. Do Let we me have see any right likes? Um, yes, we have some likes. All right, that's what I wanted to hear. We have some <laughs> likes, Henry. Don't worry about it. We're not hey. exactly talking to ourselves. We, we, are, we, are, we are working hard for likes. We're, we don't have a, a, a loop back here, and then we just talk to each other for exactly. two hours. <laughs> uh, um, there's no one watching on... on um, Let's see, uh, where are the likes here? I don't see the likes. Mr. Fabian, how are you doing, Fabian? Uh, thank you for joining. Uh, Jason also, An Angel Lanza joined, uh, uh, Professor Munguia joined, Carminda, and some other people also joined. And I think we have, uh, uh, I was expecting Carlos Cabrera to join, but he, he hasn't joined yet. Anyhow, so why don't we just uh, wrap up, uh, Henry, and then if okay. you could recommend someone to uh, go to a special of tutorials course. for more learning experiences, uh, what is your recommendation So, again, uh, the most common question is, how can I get Bitcoins? Where do I go? And the best answer for that is there is a website called Coinbase, coinbase.com, and uh, you would have to register with Coinbase. Um, connect your uh, bank account with Coinbase in order to uh, purchase Bitcoins and that is uh, currently uh, the easiest, fastest uh, way to obtain uh, Bitcoin right now. So, so what you're recommending is to go to Coinbase.com and then register with them and then you, yes. you can purchase more Bitcoin and if you want to. And this is not a big promotion because I'm not going to get anything. Yeah, well, we don't have any like <laughs> ads here that says Coinbase, sponsor. Exactly. And uh, we're not even in sponsor by anyone, just to let you know, right? We're just right. ourselves here maybe having maybe fun. Maybe we can get a sponsor. No, 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 no. Not even it. then. They're like, they're <laughs> not going to care about us. They're like, I, know, I, wish, I wish. The only sponsor for this show is actually the Eglavator. Correct, yes. Because uh, Eagle Eye Communications, which is my company, is the one that had purchased all this equipment and, <laughs> and I'm using the internet that I pay myself. <laughs> so, yeah. So, I, uh, I just to give you uh, an invitation to anyone that wants to join uh, our incubation process here at the Eglavator. So, we're, we're very, very, we'll be very, very happy to welcome you to our office space. Uh, we have also a green room facility. So uh, yeah, yesterday we had a nice uh, recording. Uh, uh, let me just show you that on uh, on the screen. Uh, we are in the studio here, and then we broadcast on Instagram um, a little bit of that. Oh, that's some of my friends there, and then you see here. So we have some very cool uh, showing here. 
So we're, we're broadcasting in 4K. We'll be having so many problems with the 4K cameras and the non-4K cameras with HDMI. We're fixing all those issues right now. But uh, this is something that it was taken from uh, this uh, that's our, our audio engineer, that's Brent Besser, and we were uh, recording him for a special uh, video that he will do for his own application uh, that he's one of our tenants here at the incubator. That's it. So we want to see some other pictures here. So we have professional uh, audio equipment so to make your voice sound perfect. I hope this uh, broadcast has very good voice. Uh, what do yes, you think? It yes, it does. Okay, perfect, perfect. So we, have a, we sound like a radio station. Not to think that we're not, but uh, we are beginners here. We're amateurs. We've never done this before. It's the very first time that we ever do this, so it's uh, it's always a challenge. So, and then uh, these are the equipment we have. We have purchased uh, soundproof uh, 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 foam, so that uh, enables uh, or blocks the audio from uh, creating echo, just like this room over here. And it's been very discreetly positioned around the, the room. So we have a, a nice table. We have uh, Alexa as well. And these are the pictures of our um, editing room with a cloud computing platform that is actually doing the broadcast on YouTube. Sorry, um, I don't know that one. <laughs> Alexa is always trying to uh, get involved. Interrupt. <laughs> interrupt. So it's just an, it's just an interrupt. So, and then this Has is. Has she ever laughed at you? You didn't no, hear about that? No, no, no. I uh, some Alexa units are laughing randomly at people. I heard that. I heard that. Yeah, so this is studio where we are right now sitting in this, this moment. And uh, we were very happy to, to have you here some more of the of our incubator. So you can join our, our process here. So it's, uh, it's uh, just get a space and then we'll help you with your with the rest. And uh, we also have a, a new area where we're going to start providing mining operations. Exactly. So we are provisioning the area with high power, with over, we can do maybe, uh, I will say, 2.2 kilowatts, Correct. no, 22 kilowatts, actually, though we may have pot 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 potentially there for, for, um, for mining or processing or whatever you want. And, hey, look, Ripple, by the way. And we're going to have podcasts If, if you mining. see, uh, mm -hmm. Ripple is number three. Wow, with with all the 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 the, the, f the the downturn on the on the other coin, now R Ripple is number three. Wow. Uh, yeah. Um, one day we're also going to talk up, go through each uh, altcoin, and I'm going to tell you what I think about each one of those. Okay, so perfect, Henry. Thank you very much for joining us. My, my and pleasure, and Edwin, and I will and definitely uh, be back. And just let's uh, let's wrap up and uh, and send you la or your or your last closing closing remarks. So there's a lot more uh, that's involved uh, that, I, that I can talk about in the crypto space. Um, if anybody wants to uh, leave any questions, I'll be happy to answer them uh, later. If you just put your questions. And I will be more than happy to come back at a later date, and we can about we can talk about it when some of the topics, you know, such as uh, mining, such as uh, how to secure wallets, uh, and we can always talk about uh, the price and the market uh, in crypto. Yeah, I like I like maybe next time you can bring your 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 some mining. Maybe you can do like a showcase uh, in the other room, uh, how to like build your own mining rig, for example, or. Things like that. That would be about. That would be very interesting show for our audience. I'm pretty sure they would be interested in that part too. Sure. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Have a great day. Have a great uh, uh, Thursday. We were. We know that in Latin America today is. Um, uh, so we have. Uh, we were broadcasting here. Uh, also, uh, all the third. So we were watching the Pope. Uh, a few minutes ago uh, on uh, Mass um, Thursday, so we have we have Pope Francis, and then maybe we can broadcast that. This is from two years ago. We're watching the 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 one from today, and uh, we heard the broadcast in Italian, if I remember correctly. And uh, so today, celebrating uh, um, the the Lord's Supper, right? So today is. Uh, uh, God, uh, Jesus had the Last Supper with the with the disciples, and that's what he's been celebrating today. And tomorrow is Good Friday, where where Jesus is uh, crucified. And if you are celebrating, I uh, hope you enjoyed this weekend with your family or Easter. And thank you very much for joining us. We'll be back uh, with more interviews and more people very soon. Thank you again. Bye bye. <laughs>